was saying on the day of Qiyamat, there will be two separate lines. One line, one group of people, they're going to go to Jannah, and one group of people, they're going to go to Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. And those people who are going to go to Jahannam, there will be man from there, he will say, Wanada ashabul Jannah, the ashab al nar. Hey man, you guys, you used to make fun of us. And you used to think you were the better guys, you were the cool guys, huh? making all the fun, and you thought I was old fashioned, yeah? And look who's the old fashioned guy now. Allah says, on the day of Qiyamah, فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَارِ يَدْحَكُونَ The believers and the good people will have the last laugh. And when they were the guys who enjoyed themselves, really they thought they were hard, and they thought they were good and cool, and today they are not cool, they are going down under for a bit of heat treatment. And the other guys, who, mashallah, who controlled themselves and did what needed to be done. They were always punctual in their prayers. They were going to the masjid, mashallah, listen to the mother and father, and listen to the maulana. And they did the things they ought to have done. They read the Quran, they did the zikr, they learned their deen. And they were helpful, respectful and polite. And they were always looking for things to please Allah. And they were always helping other people, not just to be good themselves, but they were making other people good as well. Helping their brothers, their sisters, and their cousins, their friends, and anybody else. Like, you know that about Tabligh, brothers? Put your hands up if you've been in Tabligh. Put your hands up, mashallah, if you've been in Tabligh. Like, helping the brothers, mashallah, are come to the masjid, like shaitan's army, and they are the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's army. And mashallah, they, are, they work for Allah and helping to bring people to the right path. So you join the right people, mashallah, build your iman, then doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how tough the world might become. Allah will look after you. Because Allah is the strongest. Allah is the greatest. Who's the greatest? Allah. You know how great Allah is? And this is the thing, we don't really know how great Allah is. This is why when a child is born, you know what's the first thing Muslims are supposed to do to children? When a child is born, what do they do? Anybody know? Do you remember when you were born? <laughs> Anybody remember when they were born? Uh, perhaps any father or mashallah, elder brother, someone who's got young brothers or sisters, they know. What happens when a child is born in a Muslim household? What's the first thing they do? Yes, to give azan, mashallah. Do you remember when azan was given in your ear? <laughs> I know, know mashallah. Uh, so azan, and azan begins with what? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know, they say he's the greatest, he's the greatest, but who is the real greatest? Allah. Allah. How many times do we hear it? Huh? Every day, how many times are we supposed to pray? Five, Five times. And before prayer there is azan, huh? In England as well, isn't it? We do azan here. In Birmingham, they do azan. Yeah. Even in Hemsworth, they do azan. Yeah, Masha. Everywhere in the world. Be it Mecca, Medina, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, England. Everywhere people do azan. And azan begins with? Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. In every azan, six times we say Allahu Akbar. And then when people get to the masjid, and there's iqama, again Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then when you begin your salah, what do you say? When you're going to ruku, then going into sajda, getting up, going down, getting up again, Allahu Akbar. And there are 17 rakat faraz, 3 rakat witr, that makes 20. 12 rakat sunnah in waqida. Some people do a shortcut. They only pray faraz. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Uh, don't take shortcuts all the time. It's not just taking a shortcut when you go home somewhere on the roads. But don't take shortcuts everywhere. Uh, MashaAllah. Sometimes do the long cut as well. Uh, sometimes do some extras as well. Uh, so whosoever prays, MashaAllah, and most Muslims, they pray 12 haraka sunnat in waqida. So 20 and 12 is? 32. Come, how many of you go to school? Uh, 17 faras, 3 witr, 17 and 3 is? 20 plus 12 is 32 times. And mashallah, every azan six times, and six times five is 30. So 30 times in azan you hear Allah Akbar. Then iqama, another 30 times. So 30 and 30 is 
60. So 32 rakats normally you pray on every six times in each rakat. Uh, and that comes down to 192. <laughs> 192 and 60 is uh, 252 times a Muslim hears minimum Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah. So if you hear or say something 250 times a day, you think it ought to have some effect upon you? You with me? Or are you with the village? <laughs> so if we hear something 250 times a day, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, can anybody forget Allah? But we don't do that. We don't think about it. You're going to think about it. And then when you do that, MashaAllah, you become a friend of Allah. And by praying to Allah, by listening to Allah. And just as if you were walking down the street and with your friend, and your friend was someone, MashaAllah, someone with some bustle, someone who goes to the gym every day and does some serious weights. And you, MashaAllah, not the serious weights, he does a bit of funny, funny, <laughs> funny stuff as well. <laughs> MashaAllah. A bit of Taekwondo, a bit of Kung Fu. And mashallah, now he's walking down the street with him and somebody comes and picks on you. What's your friend going to say? If he's your real friend, serious friend, you're going to say, leave him alone, he's my mate. You, wanna, you want some trouble? <laughs> Come my way. Allah Akbar. Somebody who's friends with Allah and Allah is the greatest. Anybody point a finger, friend of Allah? Allah says, Come. Let me sort you out. Anybody want to have a go with Allah? Can anybody have a go with Allah? Uh, can anybody fight Allah? Or Allah has to say, be, be dead. People will be dead. Allah will command Israfil. Israfil. That's it. Blow. You know who Israfil is? Yes. Which, which, on the day of Qiyamah, he's going to blow the horn. And when he'll blow the horn, you know what's going to happen? Stars are going to fall, the sky is going to break, the oceans are going to be put on fire. The earth will shake as much as it can be shaken. Anybody here remember the tsunami? You know what a tsunami is? Earthquake? When there's an earthquake, what happens? Uh, the buildings start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> the buildings start shaking, rocking and rolling, <laughs> and then things start happening. And then Allah Akbar, people start falling, and buildings start falling, and our people, Allah Akbar, that's just a small earthquake. Can you imagine when Israfil will blow the trumpet? A few weeks ago, there was a, what did they call the last big hurricane in America? Sandy. Sandy, yeah, a couple of weeks ago there was Sandy, a few years ago there was Katrina, anybody remember Katrina? Uh, Katrina, when Katrina blew then she blew, and when Sandy blew as well, New York was half underwater, uh, all the subways and Manhattan was underwater, you remember, remember Sandy? And that is a Sandy, and I don't know what's going to happen when Mandy comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So when the earth will be shaken as much as it can be shaken on the day of Qiyamah, Allahu Akbar. Then all the mountains will fly and Allahu Akbar, the rivers will become dry. Allahu Akbar. And then when the wind will blow and then the clouds will flow, uh, Allahu Akbar. And then Allahu Akbar will be such a devastation that <coughs> Allah becomes angry. Uh, so when Allah becomes angry, Allah forbid, Allah forbid. Uh, so anybody who's a good believer, prays five times a day, hangs about with the right crowd, looks after his mother and father, comes to madrasa, comes to masjid, sorts it, keeps himself on the straight and narrow, he's a friend of Allah. And anybody who's a friend of Allah, then if anybody tries to give him grief, Allah says, come, let me sort you out. And it doesn't take much for Allah to sort anybody out. Allah says, be, and it's done. Just as Allah will say to Israfil, can Israfil say, Ya Allah, no, Ya Allah, please. When Allah will say, blow, he will blow. And then the world will be no more. So Allah doesn't have to do much to his enemies. Allah just says, blow. Just as Allah 
commanded the water to flow in the time of Nuh alayhi salam. You know what happened in the time of Nuh alayhi salam? Anybody? Anybody know what happened in the time of Nuh alayhi salam? Uh, the rains came down and the earth started bubbling water and people were drowned. The whole world was under water. And just like Sandy came a few weeks ago, uh, the eldest sister of Sandy. <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether she was Mandy or Dandy, <laughs> but when that when that Sandy came, Sakharaha uh, alayhim saba alayal. Allah mentions in the Quran seven nights and eight days it blew, it blew and flew, and people were just whirled up. Wow, wisdom! And people were taken up, and Allahu Akbar. Allah destroyed the whole nation, and then there were people. Allah commanded the earth to split, and they split. Allah doesn't need any orders. Allah doesn't need anything special. Allah just says, be, and it's done. So if you're a friend of Allah, and all of us want to be friends of Allah, we don't want to do anything to upset Allah. Uh, you know, there's a man, when I, when I get angry, you won't like me when I get angry. <laughs> there's a character, you know, when the Hulk says, well, I've become green, and you won't like me when I'm green, when I'm angry. Uh, perhaps even Hulk can't do so, Hulk even can't do so much damage. When Allah is angry, then Allah is angry. Even all the angels, they start shivering. The mountains and the, and the sky start shivering when Allah is angry. We don't want to make Allah angry. It doesn't matter if any, any loony moony is angry. It uh, doesn't matter. But you don't want to make Allah angry. And Allah becomes angry when people disobey Allah. I like your mother and father. Uh, they love you to bits, but when you do something wrong, every now and then you get a bit of treatment, yeah? <laughs> you get a bit of, mashallah, massage here and there. Uh, I, won't, I won't ask you to put your hands up if you had a bit of massage. <laughs> Most of us have, mashallah, different times. Uh, but even mother and father, when they become angry, not good. But when Allah becomes angry, uh, there is no place you can run to. Uh, sometimes, mashallah, when the mother becomes angry, then the children, they start running. They run out of the house or whatever. But if Allah becomes angry, is there any way you can run to? No. Uh, so Allah says in the Quran, don't run away from Allah. Run towards Allah. Fafirru ilallah. Run towards Allah. Run towards Allah means seek forgiveness from Allah. Start praying. Start repenting. Don't go anywhere you should be going. Uh, do the right thing. Speak. Always speak the truth. If you speak the truth, mashallah, you've got no problems. Allah is with you. 